Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian, where we are critical, not cynical, in our musical listening. We're going to dive into a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is you want me to check out. And if you have your own track you'd like to submit to the program, you can find a link to do so in the description below. Today's comes at us from Billy. Check out Nero de Marte, Sisyphos, avant-garde metal. You know, I'm always down for avant-garde. It's kind of an umbrella term for anything that pushes the boundaries, but, you know, I have rarely walked away from some something avant-garde and thought, meh, <laughs> even if it bounces off of me, I usually have some sort of strong reaction to it. So, let's dive into this and see what Nero de Marte is bringing to the table. <laughs> Very atmospheric so far. Not really utilizing music for you know melodic or harmonic components, but in what kind of emotion they can draw out. Right now, they're really digging into tension. Every aspect of the track is trying to create a very tense atmosphere that really wants to explode or resolve or something, just wants to move from where it's at. All the layers building tension still. Dissonance. Suspension. We got a release. We have a new explosive percussive sound, but they're still highly tense. It's not the full release we were expecting. Accelerando. Very interesting tempo modulation going on there. And 
What a bass sound. Very melodic drumming style. Still retaining a rhythmic component to it. The blast beats got a lot of tension in the vocals. You kind of get these moments of groove, but they're not very long lasting. Ah, man, that was a really nice. Uh, Holly rhythm they pushed into there. Triplet feel on top of the four. Big take crescendo there, as well as a retardando. Just brought all the dynamic elements down. Uh, we even decreased the intensity of the strikes. On the drums, uh, the picking as well. First time the drums have stuck to a primarily groove-based rhythm idea. sticking with a lot of noise as a primary compositional tool whether it's attacks or dissonance distortion it's really hanging on to that that grittiness we got offbeat china hits Really fun ride stuff coming in there.
and even hear the most harmonious point of the track easily still has tension we're sitting in a single spot oh no we do get some resolution off that left side Not strong resolution, but it feels so good after that. <laughs> oh man. Like the calm after a storm, but also kind of feels like the eye of a storm. <laughs> you know there's still more to come. I think that's what it is right there on the right side just that repeating Very interesting piece. I want to start with the flow of the song because I think I touched upon a lot of what creates the tension during the reaction. I don't know how much I want to retread that here in the analysis section. Um, I do want to touch on it just in case. Uh, maybe my voice wasn't super clear with the music underneath or, or maybe you didn't catch what I had said or something like that. Um, I will touch on most of it. It's going to be a quick rundown. We're going to do that in a moment because the flow, I think, is the most important part here tied with the variety of uh, tension creating components to this track that really build what I think is its core emotional atmosphere. Um, and it is a constant rising potential energy, uh, uh, attention, really. I think that's the best word for it. An element of the track that causes you to, or at least caused me to, uh, cringe and, and bottle up and get to the edge of my seat and want the next part to come. It does that for 10 minutes with increasing intensity of this, this tightening. Um, it is kind of bonkers just how much I was. And, and I want to point this out. <laughs> uh, when I was younger, I was more okay with this feeling. I don't know what it is since I've gotten older. I don't enjoy it as much. I've actually moved away from Thriller and a lot of uh, horror films because of this. I used to love those genres, but I absolutely cannot... Uh, let me put this. I do not enjoy that feeling, that tension, that suspense, the suspense of, you know, you know what's going to happen. You're just waiting for it to happen. You have, you know, the person walking through the, the empty house and you know there's going to be a jump scare and you can hear it in the ambient uh, sounds and uh, soundtrack that's going on and you're just waiting for it. And filmmakers know that you're waiting for it. So they drag this tension moment out even further now. 
and my heart just, you know, it stops beating and my chest caves in and I'm just like, come on, come on, come on. And I'm like, do I reach over the remote? Do I skip 15 seconds? You know, I know we are, we're not going to hit the jump scare. It's just going to, you know, shorten the amount of time that I'm in this, this feeling. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of it anymore. Something clicked in the, like the last four years and I, I just don't like that tension. And this song is 10 minutes of it. So, um, you know, when I say that this song is a beautiful track that absolutely achieves its goals and that I um, I view it very highly as an artistic piece of work, but I never want to listen to it again. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this tension crafted? That's what we need to get into. It's done by two ways, um, primarily in rising escalation. And I think that is the most important aspect of the track. We have listened to some songs that are just tense all the way through, but it's a static level of tension. There might be some dips and valleys to it, but it is still relatively contained. This achieves it through a variety of different methods because it wants to escalate the song. It wants to escalate the tension and thus that that suspense, that tightening of the chest must be achieved through various ways because the ominous ideas that work when you barely have any instruments going at all are not going to work when you are in the metal, loud, ab abrasive moments. Um, it's really interesting to view how they shift these ideas to achieve the same concept across a variety of different uh, soundscapes. So the song starts out in a very quiet, ambient, uh, isolating uh, style. We have just some ambient tones, uh, a couple of notes here and there, lots of sound effects. Uh, and not that they are necessarily sound effects, they could be crafted through an instrument, but they're played in obtuse ways to create noises rather than music. Um, and I could not tell you what instruments were being used, if any instruments were being used. It could be quite possible that the band doesn't come in until the first heavy section at like four minutes into the track. Um, and that everything prior to it is all electronic. I honestly don't know. Um, but I don't hear anything that is uh, strongly electronic. Nothing that feels like uh, synth pads or anything like that. Uh, nothing that feels completely devoid of our reality and the tools and materials that we have to create instruments. Um, everything feels kind of real. They feel like strings or things that we could hit and stuff like that. So it sits in this middle realm where I believe it could either be electronic or it could be um, interesting new ways of playing instruments we already have and producing sounds out of them. Regardless, it is a very isolating moment. We have this sound off to the right. Uh, for you, it would be over here. This is definitely my left, though. The mirroring, it always gets me. Um, yeah, so we have this tone, and it is just going all the time. We, you know, we even hear it there at the end. Uh, when we come back to our quiet section, the melodic idea has shifted a little bit. We get some different ideas out of it. We'll touch that when we get there. But this tone that just kind of resonates through everything continues on. And then we have this almost chanting from a main vocalist. However, it's distant. Uh, it's off-putting. It's pushed into the mix. Uh, for a second, I thought we were going to end up with some sort of lo-fi track. I'm glad that that's not what we ended up with, especially in the metal part. Uh, it really helped me hear what was going on when I could. But just having it pushed into the mix and a bit muffled and compressed and, again, kind of distant as well, it kind of felt like I was observing from a farm, maybe behind a tree, some sort of ritual. Very creepy ritual. Again, taking me back to horror films. Um, and I'm just like, what's going on over there? You know, what's this dude doing? Creeping around, trying to watch him. And, you know, I'm barely able to make out what he's saying because it's so muffled and 
distant. And that's what it feels like there. Um, and of course, there's just all this tension. There's no resolution. There's no chordal movement. We just sort of sit in this mode and allow it to be. And it's some sort of I don't know if it is a leading chord and it really wants to resolve because of that. Because I don't know if you can have a leading chord that doesn't have, that isn't part of a set. A chord by itself doesn't really direct anywhere. But this section really felt like it wanted to resolve down to some sort of home. Uh, and I don't think you can do that with a single chord alone. So either I'm interpreting some chords before it that would fit like uh, I my brain imagines this is a leading chord it imagines where it wants to resolve down to and it fills in the blanks of the chords that would come before it to make this progression possible I don't know if that's what's happening or if there's something about the musical identity going on here the notes that are selected the few notes that are there and my brain is hearing the overall chord of it um, and maybe we are having some minor movements, but nothing that pushes towards a resolution. Um, but yeah, just a lot of tension here in the eeriness of it, in the sparseness of it, in just the repetition. It's almost like a ringing in the ears at all times. Um, when we do include melodic ideas, they are noise. And this doesn't begin until further into the section, but... There is just no harmony. It is pure dissonance, consonance between our melodic ideas. Um, and this leads directly into our second section, which is going to be the metal part. And this kind of goes through a couple of ideas, but for the most part, they all are crafted based on the same foundational concepts. That being noise, dissonance, distortion, and I mean, noise can't use noise to define noise attacks frequency of attacks repetition of attacks uh, consonants in our harmony and dissonance in our tonality um and there's also that really fun oh i almost forgot about this the really fun accelerando i don't even know if it was an accelerando because it felt very stepwise it felt like every four bars we were doubling or maybe uh you know pushing an extra 50 percent on our tempo and we were kind of getting this uh, not like a smooth increase in speed but sort of like uh i don't have a good analogy for it but yeah we're at this speed and then four bars later we're at this speed and then we move to this speed and it's just these these jumps in uh in tempo very interesting way to go about it i would have uh well no i was gonna say i would have preferred something that was just you know a 32 bar accelerando something like a train getting up to speed where it's just this gradual increase until you don't even realize it but you're up to you know a much faster tempo now but i actually like this because there's something very transformational about it uh, otherworldly transformation i'm going to keep bringing this back to horror films because you guys have no idea what was going on in my head while listening to this <laughs> but you know in in films with like demons and exorcisms and whatever and uh you know they're like trying to act like there's a demon inside of them and they make like all these really sharp movements that's what it felt like. It was very unnatural to have these very rigid jumps, especially as large as they were in tempo. Um, it felt like a transformation happening, which also works because it is a transitional concept. We introduce the metal instrumentation, but we haven't introduced the metal speed yet. And this is how we get from our intro tempo to our B section as a whole. We start off with just the instrumentation and then we transform the tempo stepwise like that. Yeah, that's exactly what it feels like to me. It is a transformation of the song from one idea to the next. Not so much as a transitional concept, but literally altering the, the core data of the song. 
one of it being tempo, the other being voice as instrumentation, uh, step by step. It is, yeah, it, it is very unnatural. It also feels very tense there because where you get the steadiness of a accelerando, you can expect it to keep going. And then the, the jolt is, you know, when do we stop? And then we, you know, we stop and you're like, oh, okay, so we're not going to go up anymore. You kind of get that kind of like hitting the brakes. You're expecting to keep going and, and you don't. But here it's like shifting gears maybe, but like with hyperdrive. <laughs> um, and you never know when the next, because it's not even, it's not like every four bars, which is what I said for my example, but it's like after this set period, we're going to jump up 30. And after this set period, we're going to jump up 40. And after this set period, we're going to jump up 60. And like, when does it stop? When do we not jump up so high? <laughs> and there is, there's nothing to really hold on to. Like I said, with, with an accelerando, you can hold on to the constant element of it. You don't know when you're stopping, but you understand the fluidity of the rise. Uh, you can hang on to that constant element, but everything on this is a variable. When do we change? How fast do we change? When are we going to stop? You don't have answers to any of it. Um, so yeah, it does feel like a transformation more than a, a transition. Uh, a musical transition, but it also functions as a musical transition, taking us from our first set to our second set. When we get into this metal section, though, everything changes. It turns into a very typical metal track. The avant-garde aspect is mostly gone. We don't have any atmospheric ideas. The guitars are used like I expect metal guitars to get used. The drumming is very typical metal drumming. The bass is typical metal bass, and our vocals are just harsh sounds. Uh, everything in here ends up kind of doing the metal thing. But it doesn't write metal music. It is definitely the metal sound, but it is continuing on with their art, artsy kind of uh, composition style of building a very specific atmosphere again which is tension and hear how they do that very interesting one thing i absolutely love the drums in this section it changes in a couple sections later uh, where we return to a more rhythmic metronome style of drumming but here we have a very melodic drumming in fact i think the drums are our lead melody our guitars are being noisy they may be playing a chromatic or they may be playing chromatically uh, they're definitely not in the tune with each other maybe i don't know honestly there isn't a single note between them that has any consonants it is constant or sorry any harmony between them it is constant consonants none of their notes sound good together i don't know if the guitars are tuned differently they could be tuned just out of step with each other. So even if they played the same note or a note that would be harmonious, like a third or a fifth away, it isn't. Um, they could be purposely playing in different keys, maybe opposite keys, so that none of the notes they play in their key is going to sound good with one of the notes that the other guitar is playing. Um, but then they're also just playing randomness it sounds like i can even when isolating one of the lines hear something that sounds melodious it is noise random sounds uh well not necessarily random to me they're random uh random pitches random intervals random uh, note lengths and no harmony to be held within or together um, it's sort of textural at that point. So the drums get to take lead and they do that by playing what I call melodic drumming, which is where they're not so concerned with falling into the groove or the time signature and laying down that metronome beat for everybody else to keep on time with. Instead, they're playing the drums like a guitar would solo or a trumpet would play a melody line. It's not so much about staying in rhythm as well as it, as much as expressing themselves musically. Even though we don't tend to think of it, snares and toms and cymbals have pitches. If you put a tuner up to one of them, 
you can it will tell you what note you're playing and at least with toms and snares there is a way to change the pitch of the the drum uh, bass kick too as well i don't know if there's a way to tune cymbals i think that is entirely dependent on shape and size but i could be wrong on that um but as far as i know there is no key or anything a cymbal is just a bent piece of metal there's no way to warp it or modulate it so i don't think you can change the pitch post creation other than breaking it you know if you put a crack in it or something you're definitely going to change the color of it i don't know if you can change the pitch that way though i don't know so many things about symbols i i just don't have information on um but yeah you can change the pitch of your snare and bass and and, and bass snare and bass and toms um so in a way you can actually play melodic lines out of the drum kit um and i kind of feel that that's what our drummer was doing definitely was no sense of groove in there it was just like soloing just kind of shredding on the drums this constant display of uh attacks across the entire kit not really sitting within any sort of okay the snare is going to be on one and three you know the the bass kick is going to be on two and four i'm going to do a snare roll at the end of every two uh you know bars or whatever there's no rhythm to it it's purely linear and melodic and i absolutely love that that is one of my favorite ways to write guitars primarily be i mean drums primarily because i don't have a strong percussive background and i find writing percussive elements non-melodically very difficult it's just a, a very different frame of mind than writing melody and harmony and uh, i just tend to force the melody into the drum kit <laughs> um probably why i use pan drums so much in my works you get the percussive element without having to deal with a kit <laughs> anyways um yeah this was a very beautiful moment though noisy chaotic dissonant tense but i love the drumming uh eventually though this reverts into more of a traditional style of groove drumming our guitars take lead there are melodic elements to their playing but again tension and noise are king that is what they aim for the bass has some really cool licks that come out every once in a while and then the rest is kind of noisy just kind of sitting on a, a note and taking in the original sitting on a note idea that our guitar did in the first section and through all of this our vocalist is screaming and growling and yelling and being as typically unpalatable unpalatable as they can be there are some gnarly sounds that our vocalist makes. And I say typically unpalatable because I'm sure being a primarily metal head community here, there's going to be a lot of people who find the vocal work here fascinating or awesome or they love every moment of it. That is perfectly fine. <laughs> that is not how 99% of people are going to hear the vocals, though, I think. Um... So to me, it's an abrasive, aggressive, unpalatable style that fits in very well with the noise and distortion and, and uh, ideas that they're doing in the rest of the music. And this is where the tension comes from here. It isn't a sort of uh, waiting for something to happen tension. This is the thing is happening and now things are not suspenseful, but very tense, very uh, stressful. We were stressed because we were afraid something was going to happen. Now the thing has happened and we are running from it kind of idea. Um, it is still a moment. Well, it's like an adrenaline fueled. Uh, you know what? I think when you're creeping through a house, you probably still got adrenaline kicking in, even if nothing's happened yet. Um, maybe that's what I don't like. Adrenaline might feel weird to me. <laughs> maybe that's why I don't like those. Anyways, getting off topic. Um, we move from this and we increase the intensity. I mentioned we bring the drumming down and introduce the droning and the noise as the lead element under the vocals. After this, we bring the intensity up again. We bring in blast beats. We bring in tremolo picking in a couple of places. But again, just sitting on a note or playing, I was going to say garbage. I don't, I try not to use negative terms. Um just playing a, a collage of notes that might not have any 
connective tissue as for key or harmony or even tuning possibly uh, they might be using fretless guitars so they can achieve some microtonality i honestly don't know but they find a way to dodge any type of harmony in this consistently <laughs> um and all of this rises to a t we continue to escalate the speed the dissonance, the consonants, and the intensity. Instruments get louder, they play faster, they play harder. They dig into the dissonance more harshlier. Until we reach a moment when we cannot go any higher and it all explodes and disappears. Kind of. We end up with two instruments. On the right, on the right, we have a guitar playing a dyad, very tense, sitting on this one dyad. On the left, we have a piano, harp, uh, you know, it was a string, so I'm going to, a plucked string, playing a melodic idea that moves through a couple of chords and resolves. There is tension in the melody, but there is resolution at last. And I mentioned that this part feels like being in the eye of a storm where the insanity has passed. The chaos is gone, but the event is not over. There is resolution, there is calm, but there's also a reminder that there's still something on the horizon. And I noticed at the end of the track we didn't end it proper. I'm going to assume it goes into the next track. And if it's anything like this, the Eye of the Storm metaphor works very well. Um, there's also some real oddities after the uh, guitar and plucked instrument died out, faded away. There's like 20 seconds there at the end of just weird noises. I got nothing to make of that. Maybe it ties into the next track. Um, but that is this song broken down. It is a series of compositional ideas in order to craft a rising tension for 10 minutes and to dissipate that into a moment of brief quasi relief. And that's what the entire song does, at least as far as I picked up on a first time listen. I want to dive into the lyrics here and see what's going on because I don't even know. There's no lyrics here. Well, I, it's an exaggeration. Hyperbole. There's very little lyrics here, though. <laughs> take my will, take my hands. This is the last dance. Long I have spun. This is the dance. Victorious am I? I do not push. Victorious am I. I am pulled. So right off the bat, we have somebody who is working towards a goal, has worked towards a goal for a very long time, and actively puts everything of themselves into it. This dance, he puts his will and his hands into it long has he spun the dance. Now, it could very well be a metaphor, I mean, a literal dance. I'm going to take it metaphorically for a project. Could be any type of project. Could actually be a dance in a ritual. And the ritual he's been preparing for for years. Decades, maybe, even finding the right components and place to do it and perfecting the dance and all of this stuff. Um, but it's definitely something, a, a lifelong goal, I would say. It seems that once the goal has been accomplished, though, there's a question to whether it was done right. He asks twice, Victorious am I? Am I victorious in this? The first time he says, I do not push. Almost to say that I don't know if this is right, but I'm going to let it be what it is. 
Then the second time says, I am pulled. Almost as if whatever is happening does not quite know if, he, if it was done correctly, but something is happening. He's being pulled into him. To skies of black, to barren places, absurd desires, hopes, fears, to death, martyrous in a trance. Endlessly we dance for the stone, relentlessly we dance to ascend, to fall. You took my will, took my hands in this last dance, but I befriended time to create and live again, and create and live again. Very abstract, goes, goes quite a far into the uh, avant-garde element of the music, but what I get out of this is putting so much effort into a goal and seeing that effort possibly go to waste or maybe what you wanted to do, you have done so well, it's actually gone into a bit of the negative sphere. Uh, whatever this project was, it turned the skies to black and created a barren place with absurd desires for death. And this person was pulled into this world. However, it says, despite taking my will and my hands for this dance, for this, you know, this life goal, I put all my time into it, all my... Uh, you know, everything into it, and it kind of didn't work. <laughs> well, maybe it did work. Maybe their intent was to destroy the world or to find a world of black skies. Almost feels regret, though, or remorse, not remorse, uh, hatred. You know, this project took my will. It took my hands. Despite all that, though, I befriended time. So I actually found something out of this uh, to create and live again. So despite putting all this effort into this project that ended up blowing up in my face, I found something new on the other side of this work. Something that brings me joy to create again. Which goes along well with the song it takes a long time to get to the resolution there is so much tension and stress through this song that would uh, certainly work well with the idea of working towards a project a lifelong dream and the blood and sweat and tears and time that goes into that feeling like the goal is always over the horizon no matter how many steps you take you don't get any closer years decades go by you finally accomplish this and it's not exactly what you wanted and that's the middle part of the song that is the chaos there's so much tension in there but also just aggression and wrath and rage and noise and, and chaos uh and it's possibly a moment of trying to find oneself again after such large and uh, time-burdened failure. But then you get to the end, and it's not perfect. There's still some tension there, but you find some resolution, you find some peace. Something else catches your eye, and maybe this project will be a little better. And it won't be so disastrous in the end. That's kind of what I get out of this. But again, it's so metaphorical. It could really be about a lot of different things. But I feel like that is my reading of it. And it ties well with the music. So, I don't know. You know, what do you guys think about Nero de Marte's Sisyphus? Uh, Sisyphean task, rolling the boulder up the hill. Putting a lot of time and effort into something for the end result to mean nothing. I'm trying to make peace with that. Hmm. Let me know in the comments what you think of this track. If you agree with me or disagree, anything you'd like to add or correct me on, let me know. Above the comment section is a description box and there's a link for Linktree 
takes you to this menu right here. has links for everything related to the channel. You can support the channel through Patreon, picking up merch, or submitting your own special selections. Uh, and there's also links in there to join some of the communities that surround the channel, like my Twitter and the Discord server. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We'll continue on with War Week and check out another special selection. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.